This video is on the Macintosh XR50 and Macintosh XR100 speakers. At first glance, these speakers do look similar, but Macintosh designed them for two totally different kinds of rooms and listening situations. They are not for everyone, but if your listening room and taste fit into one of these two categories, I think you should give them some serious consideration. Let's get started. <laughs> If you are into audio gear at all, you have probably heard the Macintosh name. They were founded in 1949 by Frank Macintosh and have gone on to become one of the most well-known brands in the audio world. They have designed some of the most iconic electronics ever created and have been a part of some of the most significant events in music history. The Grateful Dead famously used an all Macintosh amplified speaker system known as the Wall of Sound in their concerts in the 70s. Macintosh has been at the forefront of both tube and solid state electronics and has a huge following for its sound quality, beautiful appearance, and tank-like build quality that will last for generations. Now, Macintosh is not like most companies that make speakers. Typically, speaker companies focus on speakers only, and none of them have created the incredible amount of great electronics that Macintosh has delivered out of Binghamton, New York for over 75 years. When their engineers decide to make a speaker, it's more for a specific type of room and listening desires. But don't get me wrong, they take speaker design very, very seriously and have some of the best testing facilities that you will find anywhere in the world. So who are these two speakers created for? Let's first look at the XR50. There are a lot of people out there who just physically do not have room for a large speaker or even a subwoofer to augment the base of a small speaker. Think of a small listening area or an office space. Macintosh wanted to design a compact speaker that could produce bass that would make you think that there was a subwoofer in the room with you. Now, it's easy to make a speaker that has a big peak around 80 hertz to make you think that there's a lot of bass, but Macintosh wanted very low distortion and deep, fast, accurate bass. The result was the XR50. Like all Macintosh products, the XR50 is beautifully finished with a bookshelf friendly size of 17 inches high by eight inches wide by just under 12 inches deep. These are available in a gloss black or red walnut finish. They are not designed to be laid on their side though and need to be set up vertically. This relatively tiny little box gets down to an honest 40 hertz, which is amazing considering their form factor. Most people who first hear them are sure that there is a subwoofer in the room. Now back about 30 years ago, Macintosh invented and patented their LDHP woofer. This stands for low distortion, high power. This was first released in their XR250 speaker system. When they were doing the design and testing of all different kinds of woofers, they noticed most of them fluttered at some frequencies, which added both distortion and a blurring to the actual bass sounds. Now, it is very hard for the human ear to hear distortion at low frequencies, but their engineers still wanted to eliminate as much as possible. The way they did this was to look at the woofer's magnetic gap. They used metal pieces below and above the gap that had high conductivity. This reduced the way that the voice coil magnetic field reacted with the steel part of the magnet structure. While this may sound pretty technical, the end result was a woofer distortion measurement about one tenth of anything else that they tested at the time. Macintosh has improved this tech over the years, and you'll find one six inch polycomb woofer in the XR50 that uses their LDHP tech. For the rest of the frequency range, they once again did something pretty unique. The mid-range tweeter drivers are inverted two inch titanium domes. These are positioned with one above and one below the super tweeter. These handle a lot of the frequency range from 500 hertz all the way out to eight kilohertz. With their orientation, you get extremely wide horizontal dispersion, but a more limited vertical dispersion. The limited vertical dispersion reduces ceiling and floor reflections, while the expanded horizontal dispersion makes for a big soundstage. Two of them can also handle more power than one, which is another plus. Now you'll typically see a one inch dome tweeter, but the XR50 uses a 3 4 inch titanium dome. The smaller dome has the advantage of wider dispersion, but the con of less power handling. By crossing over at eight kilohertz, the power they receive is dramatically reduced. And these extend way out beyond the range of human hearing to 45 kilohertz, which helps give them a very open sound. Now, like with most good things, there is a catch. If you have been in this hobby for a very long time, you might remember the classic AR3 speakers. 
Many speaker engineers consider these to be one of the first well-engineered speakers to be released. They also had very low distortion, but the catch was you needed a very large amplifier to properly drive them. Well, the XR50s are the same way. They have a sensitivity rating of 81 dB, which is about the lowest that I've ever seen. Although, like with everything that they make, Macintosh does not fudge their specs at all on anything. You will need very good power and a lot of it. In fact, I feel you're gonna need about 200 watts per channel and more is even better. And Macintosh just so happens to make a ton of great integrated amps and separates that can fill their power demands just fine. So, if you have a small room with no space for a larger tower speaker or a subwoofer but want bass like you were used to with your big tower speakers, you should have a hard look at the XR50. You'll probably spend as much or more on an amp as your speakers, but you will get bass that will bring a big smile to your face. But not only that, the sound field that it can throw out is very large for its size. If your listening room has been downsized, or if you want a killer office system, the XR50 is a wonderful solution. Now, let's take a look where the XR100 comes in. This one was made for a completely different use case. There are a lot of music lovers out there who in their younger years had some really large speakers that were capable of recreating that feeling of power that you get at a live concert. But life situations change and those huge speakers no longer work in their current living space. On the other hand, many music lovers really enjoy that big, full, loud sound that you get at a concert and they can afford to purchase some serious speakers, but their environment requires something small that they may not be able to recreate that huge concert sound. Well, if you fall into one of those types of music lovers, and I'm sure a lot of you do, the XR100 might be just what you need. To put it in simple terms, these guys can really crank out some sound. And unlike the XR50, they do not need a ton of power to get them going, but if you want to feel like you are at a live concert with very high volume levels, bring on the power and these things can handle just about anything that you can throw at them. These towers are about 8 inches wide, excluding their nice base, and available in the same beautiful finishes as the XR50. You may not think a speaker this small could produce true concert level sound, but they can, and also produce a massive sound field that will completely fill your room. So how did Macintosh take what looks like the same tech and make it able to play so loud with almost non-existent distortion and be easier to drive? The answer is simply more of the same. If you double the number of woofers in the system, the sensitivity increases by 3 dB. And if you quadruple the number, you get an increase of 6 dB. The XR100 has four of the same great woofers that are used in the XR50. Not only does this decrease the power needs, but it also increases power handling, decreases distortion, and allows the bass to go even lower. These get down to an honest 30 hertz, even with their very small footprint. To keep up with the power handling of the four woofers, Macintosh needed to go with 10 of the inverted dome titanium mid-range drivers. Just like with the woofers, this increases sensitivity and lowers distortion. But they also added a twist. The two drivers above and below the tweeter cover the range from 2K to 8K, while the four above and four below cover from 300Hz to 2K. Now Macintosh can still use the same 3 quarter inch titanium tweeter as it's crossed over high enough to handle even the 600 watt rated maximum on them. You also get the addition of bi wiring or bi amping capability with the XR100. Now put on your favorite rock and roll live album, crank these up, and you will literally feel like the band is in the room with you. They sound very neutral with effortless extension and true bass punch. The only trade-off, and it may not actually be a trade-off for many, is the imaging. A lot of small tower speakers can paint an image where you feel like you can see the guitar or snare drum in space right in front of you. You do need to be sitting equidistant from both speakers to experience this, but it is very involving. With their eight mid-range drivers, the sound is not as localized on these as most small towers can be. However, the eight drivers throw out this super wide and big soundstage that is also a lot of fun. And none of the speakers that I know of can produce that perfect image that can put a concert in your room like these can. Another plus to both of these is if you are already in the Macintosh family and love those green lights, you can use your Macintosh amp to power them up on the base of either of these when you turn your system on. I hope that this overview has helped you better understand these great speakers from our friends at Macintosh. They are certainly not for everyone, but they do fill two unique needs of some music lovers. 
If you are still unsure if either of these Macintosh speakers are right for you, or if you just have more questions, call or chat with our team of experts at audioadvice.com. Plus, when you purchase from Audio Advice, you get free shipping, lifetime expert support, and a price guarantee. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any of our latest content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.